My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I am here with a plethora of AMD news. Now, before I get into that, I just want to say that Paul is back from Norway. He got back on Sunday. However, unfortunately, he's come down with a rather nasty cold slash man flu, so that's why he's not been doing any videos since he got back. However, he has written a few articles, which I am going to be discussing in this video, so do check out the description, as you will find links there. If you, if you, want, if you, want, if you want your dose of Paul, that's where you'll find it until he's better, unfortunately. So what do I have for you today? Well, the first thing is an update for HW Info, which lists AMD Navi, Starship, Matisse, and Intel Ice Lake. We also have Raven Ridge Benchmarks, GPU production. And our final item is more of a discussion on what AMD have planned for the future, which was touched on by AMD CEO Lisa Su. Let's begin with HW Info. So basically, a new update has popped up on HW Info, which adds support for some very interesting things indeed. We have on the CPU side, Ice Lake SP from Intel, of course, as well as AMD Starship and Matisse CPUs, and we also have Navi and Vega mentioned as well. What's pretty interesting on the topic of Vega is that there is a separate mention of the RX Vega M, which of course is the mobile Vega chips, which hints that this is the 7M Vega that we have discussed before, or something else that we don't know. Now Navi, sadly, is a little bit of a cliff note, but it is there. So the real cause of speculation there is, of course, what's going on with Vega, because again, it could be 7M, it could be something else, we don't know. But let's kick things off with this particular segment with Intel Ice Lake SP. Now this is a high-end desktop variant, so a HEDT, which obviously is more often used in a server. So basically, think Skylake X, something like that. However, let's focus for a second on Starship. Now, for those of you who've been around a while, might recall back in 2016 that this was on a roadmap which you can see. And while this is rather outdated, as you can see, it was posted in February of 2016, the fact that it has been listed by HW Info pretty much confirms that AMD are still working on Starship. So again, this roadmap is pretty much ancient history when it comes to tech, so do take the info with a bit of pitch socks. I'll say this is an official thing from AMD, but it might have changed since there might have been improvements, modifications, and so on. However, if the leaked roadmap is accurate, Starship will be a 7NM process with 48 processor cores, and thanks to the wonderful SMT, we'll be running 96 threads, which is insanity, I'm sure you will agree. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be something you're sticking in your home PC anytime soon, but it is going to be probably following on from Epic. And as Paul himself points out in the article, which again will be linked below, if Starship is 7NM, again, that might not be accurate and all that, it will be making use of Zen 2 rather than Zen Plus. However, before I close out this segment, let's move on to the final note, which is Matisse, which is the internal code name that AMD used for Zen 2. Now, obviously, this has been discussed not only by us numerous times, but by pretty much anyone who's involved in tech news and all that sort of stuff. But this is obviously the true sort of successor to Zen slash Ryzen rather than Zen Plus, which obviously is just tweaking architecture and process rank and all that good stuff. So Zen 2 is like the next real evolution in what AMD are doing with Zen. Zen Plus is just an improvement upon what we already have. Not that that isn't cool. I'm just saying Zen 2 is where the real excitement is. So seeing Matisse listed here is extremely interesting. Now, what's also interesting is that Dr. Lisa Su, of course, is the CEO of AMD, has said that Zen 2 is finished in terms of design and tape out, and they're going to be shipping to select partners by the end of the year. So that obviously kind of lines up with the HW Info leaks. This could mean that we see Starship by the end of 2018, as that is kind of on the roadmap as well. And obviously, that's kind of line up with our speculation that Starship will be using Zen 2. So that is a lot of speculation upon speculation upon rumour, but it's still very interesting, to say the least. Oh, for the brave, new drinking game. Take a shot every time I say interesting. That one counts, by the way. Anyway, let's move on to Raven Ridge, shall we? Now, obviously, both myself and Paul have discussed Raven Ridge multiple times, which obviously are the Ryzen Plus Vega APUs, which 
We'll be seeing a launch date of February the 12th, and I'm not going to go through all the specs. We already kind of know that, and that there is an article done by Paul, which I will link below. He goes through the specs in rather in-depth detail. But what is interesting, however, is that we have an alleged leak which originated on the Chinese forum Baidu. Now, these leaks have since been pulled from the forum, so make of it what you will. Do take with it with a pinch of salt, as per usual. However, the main focus of our leak or rumour here today is the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G. So, if you look at the score, which will be on screen right about now, it is just over 5K, but you might go, alright, but what does that actually mean? Well... It does put it somewhere between a RX 550 or RX 560. So let's make an assumption based upon a rumour. Dangerous practice, I know. If you assume that these numbers continue, as Paul points out, a similar trend between the 3D Mark 11 scores and quote-unquote real games, we should be looking at a chip which it is capable of playing games such as you know, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, and other things that aren't really particularly demanding. You know, I don't think anyone's expecting to play The Witcher 3 at 4K on this thing, let's just put it that way. But you can run those sort of sort of less power less power demanding games, probably Overwatch as well, fairly reasonably at 1080p, and obviously more demanding games, you might have to take a knock on the level of detail or the resolution, or you know, be happy you're playing at a slightly lower frame rate or what have you. Obviously, one performance benchmark is not really enough to com complete the picture. But it does give us a base point to work of, and it's looking, you know, not too bad actually, especially for an APU. Now you may recall that AMD themselves did release some performance charts when they finally revealed what was going on with Raven Ridge, and these leaks do kind of line up with the performance that we saw represented in those charts. So this does obviously lend some validity to this leak, and the fact that it was removed is always suspicious to me because that kind of makes me go, all right, so was that removed because it's real or because it's not real? Like, it always makes me think it's more real because someone in a suit was obviously like, oh no, let's, let, let's, let's sort this out before it gets out of control, but obviously, you know, they were too late, and here we are. So, let's move on to our final couple of things, and the next one is how AMD are going to be ramping up GPU production. Now, this particular topic was brought up during AMD's full year financial results. Now, I'm not going to be discussing that in this particular video, because it's already going to be pretty damn lengthy, and I haven't even gotten to my final topic yet. However, what they did discuss is the graphics card shortage and how they want to kind of ramp up GPU production. Now the CEO Dr. Lisa Su did confirm that they do have plans to ramp up GPU production in order to meet the increasingly high demand which obviously is partially just from gamers and the increased interest in PC gaming that we have seen reflected in you know sales of hardware and software and so on but obviously cryptocurrency mining is a thing I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Now she did basically confirm that the thing holding them back isn't silicon, but it is the really annoying industry-wide shortage on memory. Now, obviously, we've seen that affect various aspects of technology, not just within PC gaming, but obviously, you know, smartphones, pretty much any device that, you know, has some form of memory in it is going to be affected by this. However, she did say, quote, the GPU channel is lower than we would like it to be, so we are ramping up production. At this point, we're not limited by silicon per se, so our foundry partners are supplying us. There are shortages in memory. I think that is true across the broad board, whether you're talking about GDDR5 or talking about high bandwidth memory. We continue to work through that with our memory partners, and that will certainly be one of the key factors going into 2018. Now, they're definitely going to be trying to push this and relieve this as much as they can, because one of the things they also touched on is how they are seeing an even stronger for demand for graphics card in Q1 of 2018 compared to the last quarter of last year. So at the moment, obviously, it's too soon to say whether or not these memory shortages and obviously the increase in prices is going to continue. Really hope it kind of eases off and goes back to normal because, you know, I'd like to buy some new RAM without having to cough up a kidney and obviously it would also help graphics card manufacturers and other people as well which obviously maybe bring down the prices of graphics cards a little bit as well. 
So hopefully that eases off, but AMD are definitely on the case. They're definitely wanting to keep up with the demand. Obviously, they had a really good 2017. Not going to go too much into that, as I said, but they did have a good 2017, and obviously they want to continue that momentum as much as they can. So that is something they're looking to do. Obviously, how well they managed to pull that off, we're going to have to wait and see. Unfortunately, as per usual, Mystic Meg is nowhere to be around. I haven't seen it on TV in years, so, you know, not really surprised. Anyway... Now to close out the video, I just want to touch on a couple of extra comments that were made by Lisa Sue in a rather extensive interview with Anan Tech, and of course I will include a link to their article in the description below this video, where she discussed a few things for the future, because as I said, the company did do really well in 2017, so naturally people are looking to what they're going to do this year. And one of the things I've already touched on in this video is, of course, Vega and 7NM. And I think her comments on this are really interesting. And she does say, quote, I think that we always think about this very systematically as to how we bring out new process technology. In this case, it made a lot of sense to bring Vega down to 7NM. Vega, as you know, is practically a brand new architecture and has only been out since August. So we believe Vega has legs. We have so many fe features in Vega such as adding some of the compute-centric features, but the beauty of 7M NM is density and the power. When you think about just how much compute horsepower you can put in the new technology, it made sense. We usually start with the GPU. The GPU is usually for us the first product in a technology. Graphics does have the capability for a lot of redundancy on it, so we feel like it's a great utilization of the technology. And on that vein, she touched on the topic of how AMD are considering GPU bifurcation which basically means separation of architectures for different uses scenarios. So essentially they're thinking beyond just gaming. And obviously they have shown this in various different ways, various different technologies. So it's not exactly new that not just, hey, PC gamers all the way, like that's, that's not a thing. But this is something they're considering, that GPU bifurcation. And she did say, quote, you will see us move on this and we're very committed to gaming. So that's not going to change, but you will see us do some more purpose-built products for the compute side of things. So basically, they're not giving up on gaming, obviously. That has been a huge win for them in terms of uh, success and profits and revenue and all that stuff. But obviously, they are considering the broader market outside of that. You know, what else they can use this technology for? You know, they can take what they did with Vega and be like, okay, we've got some really cool ideas here, but how can we kind of change it and adapt it to make use of this use scenario? Hey, let's make a new architecture for this. But then parts of the architecture could also be used for this thing. Could also, you know, then drip down to gaming. Like it all just kind of expands into this sort of lovely sort of web of creativity, which is actually really interesting and in seeing how the pieces of technology and the different ideas connect to each other is actually quite fascinating. One of the things I really find interesting about tech is how one thing spares on another, which goes back to the first thing, which was spares on a completely different thing, but then that might come back to the new thing of the first thing. You kind of get where I'm going, like it all kind of connects in a really interesting way. But obviously people want to see actual like real improvements when it comes to Vega, because while Vega is very cool, it definitely disappointed a lot of people for various reasons and there are obviously you know, a bunch of improvements that could be made to just make Vega overall a stronger architecture. For example, Paul suggests in his article, and again I will link this below, that you know more shaders could be present in the silicon and we need to really sort out those memory bandwidth constraints as well because obviously the HBM2 and the power concerns are also a really big concern for Vega. So. There are a ton of stuff that they could do and they're probably going to come out of nowhere with some you know, stuff that we wouldn't have even thought of. To be honest, I don't think anyone expected them to come out of Ryzen and for Ryzen to be as great as it was. So, you know, they, they might have another huge win up their sleeve. They might not. They might have something that's cool, but not as amazing as Ryzen up the sleeves. Or they could just have that complete dud up there as well. You never know. That is the joy of any invention, really. It's like, hey, the last thing I invented was amazing. But, you know, this thing is just like, you know, it's like a dead fish on a plate, basically. But seriously, I am really looking forward to seeing what they're doing. They have definitely been an interesting company to watch over 2017. And I don't think that's going to be changing anytime soon especially with all these plans that they have for this year that I have detailed in this video. So, thank you very much for watching. Your support is highly appreciated. Do remember to give us a like and subscribe, even if you would care to do so. Do check us out on patreon.com forward slash redgamertech. If you can, throw us a dollar, it's highly appreciated. If not, no worries. Your likes, shares, and all that good stuff really do make a huge difference. So, thank you again for your support. It really does make a big difference to us both. Bye-bye.